Thank you very much, Apo Diputado Hector Ortega, who is, uh, ito lang nata ang nakikilala ko, na habang tumatagal ang panahon, ay siya ay bumabata. We are still trying to extract from him what is his secret of his longevity, his energy, and I think the reason is his passion for public service, and that is why he has been a six-time congressman. Also, every time, every time I am with the congressman, and also your governor, he does not fail to remind me that in the 2010 elections, La Union gave me more votes than Ilocos Norte. It has been a long-standing argument between Governor Aimee of Ilocos Norte and Governor Manuling of La Union. And when I looked at the records, it is true, La Union gave me more votes than Ilocos Norte. But Ilocos Norte is smaller than La Union. So, when you look at the percentage, pantay lang naman. That's all. That is why when I come here, I am always greeted by the greeting, Welcome back home. And the congressman, when he greeted me when I landed, he said, Welcome back to your home away from home, which is exactly what I consider La Union to be. I would like to also greet uh, Congressman Pacoy Ortega of uh, Abono. Uh, the President of the University, Attorney Benjamin Sapitula, the members of the DIMSU Board of Regents, University and Campus officials, Acting Mayor Francisco Fontanillo of our host town, the members of the Sangunian, Sangunian Bayan, the regional directors who had been properly acknowledged earlier, the students, of course, the most important, the parents of our students, without whom none of this would have been possible. Ladies and gentlemen, na imbag na bigat yu amin. Thank you very much uh, for the, to the Dimso family for the warm welcome and for inviting me to do this to become to be part of the 34th birthday or 34th foundation anniversary even if i am only a replacement for governor imi it is really not i but my, my mana governor imi who was originally invited by university president attorney sapitula to be the guest speaker today presumably she thought that because it is a dimsu, then it should be the namesake of, of my father, who created the university, who should come to be with you today. In his, in his letter of invitation, Attorney Sapitula spoke, said to Governor Aimi with these words of great flattery, you have always fascinated and inspired us with your wit and charm. And we miss you here in the university and in the province of La Union. So now I ask Attorney Sapitula, Abay, awang ka di kanyak dagiti yung kalidad? Wala ba akong mga katangian na ito? Kahit papano, meron din naman siguro wit and charm. Manang kem manong. But levity aside, it is certainly an important day and it is an honor and privilege for me to be with you on the occasion of the university's 34th founding anniversary. And I congratulate the entire Dimsu family for yet another year of achievement and progress for the Dimsu in, its, uh, in, in the achievements that have been put before us by the university president in his State of the University address. 
perhaps everyone will, will agree with me, that we also happen to be on a very special day today, that our celebration coincides with the rare visit of a shooting star. I even call him a rock star that, uh, that is coming to our country today. My friends, I am referring, of course, to the visit of the Pope, Pope Francis, to our beloved country at approximately 5.45 this afternoon. His Holiness Pope Francis will arrive in the Philippines. The papal visit can be likened to a great comet making an appearance in our skies, as it is indeed a very rare and infrequent occurrence. This is only the fourth time that the Pope will have visited the Philippines. This, the last visit of the Pope, the equally popular and charismatic John Paul II, was exactly 20 years ago, way back in January 1995, where it was estimated that three million people had lined up along the streets to welcome His Holiness. This time, the estimate is at six million people who will want to attend the Luneta Mass on Sunday. Malaman, hindi pa kayo pinapanganak nun. Siguro sa atin dito sa si Atone Sapitula lamang ang nakakaalala nung uh, pagbisita ng pa Masanto Papa. That was on the occasion of the 1995 World Youth Day. And it was also during the time of the Dimsu was celebrating its 14th foundation anniversary. And to add to these historic coincidences, Pope Paul VI visited the Philippines in February of 1981, just one month after the establishment of the Dimsu. Parang napakaswerte naman ng Dimsu na bumibisita pa ang Santo Papa sa Pilipinas para sa mga foundation ninyo. The papal visit is very, very significant to our nation. In fact, we desperately need it, especially the strong message that he carries, the message of mercy and compassion. The visit of the head of the Roman Catholic Church and the spiritual leader of 1.2 billion followers will certainly cause both a resurgence and renewal in the faith of the more than 80 million Filipino Catholics in the country. But Pope Francis offers so much more, and he has many profound lessons to teach us, makakatoliko man o hindi, which is why I am so very thankful to His Holiness that had been blessed with the time and the energy to visit the Philippines amid his very tight schedule and his physical condition. For everyone's information, Pope Francis or Father George Bergoglio just turned 78 last December 17, and he celebrated his birthday with the crowd during the weekly general audience. In fact, according to the Vatican Radio, Pope Francis took time to blow out his candles on the cake and sip the traditional Argentinian tea offered to him by the crowd. I was blessed with the rare privilege of personally meeting Pope Francis last July last year in Rome. Kasama ang aking asawa at panganay na anak, naghanda pa kami ng aming script dahil alam namin na Spanish at Italian lamang ang lingwahe niya. Pero nang duman siya sa harap namin, nautal na kaming lahat at natameme kami at nakalimutan yung script na hawak-hawak namin na pinagandaan namin na matagal. Ngunit nang duman siya, ay nasabi ko sa kanya, I am from the Philippines. And alam mo na alam ninyo, sabi sa akin, Enero, Enero, I will be there in January. I was starstruck and ibang klase ang dating ng ora ng ating Santo Papa na si Pope Francis. Si, sinasabi ko nga na pangbalanse ang pagbibisita sa atin ng Santo Papa, lalo na para sa ating mga kababayan sa Eastern Visayas, tulad ng Tacloban, Leyte, na nasalanta sa Super Typhoon Yolanda. Dahil sa pagbibisita ni Santo Papa, magpa, magkakapagdulot siya ng kakaibang pakiramdam ng bagong pag-asa sa ating mga kababayan na naghirap at nagkasakit na dinadanas. 
Marami pa siyang mga daladalang aral para sa ating mga Pilipino sa kanyang pagbisita. For me, the first lesson that comes to mind when we speak of our Pope is that of humility. When I met him, I was able to personally thank him for all his lessons of humility. Napakalakas ng mensahe nito, lalo na sa ating mga Pilipino, na pinahalagan ang mga pagpakumbaba. All of us may have seen or heard that Pope Francis has preferred a simpler purple vestment over the traditional and more ornate robes, black shoes over the traditional papal red shoes. Tapos, mas ginusto niya na tumira sa mas simpleng bahay sa halip na sa traditional na apostolic palace na nakalaan para sa Santo Papa sa Vatican. Siya rin ay makamasa at pro-poor. And these attributes are reflected not only in his writings, especially in his first apostolic exhortation, but also in his actions. In short, he walks the walk and what, what he says, he does. Kaya nga ang tawag sa kanya, people spoke. This is because of his down-to-earth persona and ideals which appeal to the popular masa. He is attuned to the needs, weaknesses, and the disadvantages of the poor. Perhaps this is because he himself had previously experienced poverty, having been a former janitor and a nightclub bouncer in Argentina. And leading by example, he prays that we all heed the plea of the poor and the disadvantaged, respectful and compassionate listening. We have many, many lessons to learn, to apply, not only to our work, but to our lives from this Pope. Pope Francis wants the Catholic Church to undergo a paradigm shift, be more pastoral rather than dogmatic. He wants the Church to be a field hospital after battle, which takes care of those battered and wounded of, the, of a war. He also says this, at pakinggan nyo ito, dahil ito ay nagpapaliwana talaga sa kanyang pag-iisip. He says that he prefers a church which is bruised, hurting, and dirty because it has been out in the streets rather than a church which is unhealthy from being confined and from clinging to its own security. In short, he wants his church, all of us, to go and get out of our comfort zones and with sincere hearts, reach out and help our brothers who are in need. A peacemaker, Pope Francis also wants and prays that all the people in the world treat each other as brothers and sisters. And this is his premise in his argument for world peace. The word that he uses is fraternity. Hindi ito yung fraternity na iniisip ninyo, mga estudyante, kundi isa pang mas malawakan at mas mala malalim na kapatiran ng mga tao sa buong mundo. Kahit ano pa ang relihiyon o may relihiyan man o wala. According to Pope Francis, we are all brothers, all sisters, Christians, Muslims, Jews, and all religions. A people of many faces. And it is not far-fetched, for according to him, we all took up, we all look up to Abraham as a common father figure and a great example of faith. While remaining firm and true to settled church doctrine, he does not exclude and alienate anyone from the grace of God. I will never forget the very powerful statement when he was asked about homosexuals. Do they belong in the church or do they commit a sin? Alam niyo ang sagot niya? Who am I to judge? And this is the humility that I speak of. Even business leaders have a thing or a thing or two to learn from Pope Francis. A business, he says, is a vocation and a noble vocation, provided that those engaged in it see themselves challenged by a greater meaning in life. This will enable them truly to serve the common good by striving to increase the goods of this world and to make them more accessible to all, especially the poor. And for us who are in public service, it is also gratifying that Pope Francis does not shut the door like some church leaders do to politicians and their often denigrated politics. In fact, Pope Francis is a source of inspiration to me 
both in private life and in public service. His Holiness asked God to give us more politicians capable of sincere and effective dialogue aimed at healing the deepest roots and not simply appearances of the evils in the world. Politics, he says, though often denigrated, remains a lofty vocation and one of the highest forms of charity inasmuch as it seeks the common good. I beg the Lord to grant us more politicians who are genuinely disturbed by the state of society, the people, the lives of the poor. It is vital that government leaders and financial leaders take heed and broaden their horizons, working to ensure that all citizens have dignified work, education, and health care. And again, these are lessons which, although he speaks to politicians specifically, we can all take to heart and live our lives in that thought. Indeed, whenever whether viewed as a spiritual, religious, business, or state leader, the Pope is a total package and can be a source of inspiration, wisdom, and hope to all of us here in the Philippines, both Catholics and as well as the rest of the 20% 20 per, 20 of the Filipino population. Igit sa lahat, naway maging inspirasyon si Pope Francis sa atin lahat dito sa Dimsu, lalo na sa ating mga pinaaralangalan ngayon ng mga estudyante, mga guru, mga empleyado at mga administrador. Makakaasa kayo na ako bilang inyong senador ng ating Republika ng Pilipinas ay taus puso mamumuhay at magtatrabaho ng alinsunod sa mga mahalagang payo at pang pangaral ng ating Santo Papa na tunay na makinig sa tawag ng ating mga kababayan, lalo na ang mga mahihirap at mga naaapi upang mabigyan, mabigyan lunas ang kahirapan at pagdurusa sa ating bansa at lipunan. So let us all make this significant milestone in Philippine history meaningful and a rich experience for all of us. Let us take the opportunity to learn more about this Pope, Pope Francis or Father George Bergoglio, his life, his person, his theology and virtues from news accounts and from his very own messages and writings, all of which can be found anywhere in the internet. Kahit nandito tayo sa dakong norte ng Pilipinas, sa lalawigan ng La Union at hindi kasimpalad ng mga nasa Maynila o sa Leyte, tayo pa rin ay may kakayahan na makilala si Father George Bergoglio o si Pope Francis sa pamamagitan ng ating sariling pagbabasa, pagmumuni at higit sa lahat sa ating mga pananalangin. Let me congratulate once more the Dimsu family for its on its 34th founding anniversary. We all look forward to more years of public service to the excellent and the quality education as reflected by the achievements that you have had in the past few years as the progress that we have seen in the past few years. We also thank the, we also thank our Pope for coming to visit us and more importantly for giving us the lessons that he has given us to lead us to a better life. Mabuhay po kayo lahat. Mahal ka na. Mabuhay ang Dimsu family. Congratulations muli. Happy birthday. Happy 34th birthday sa Dimsu. To all, all, the, all the administrators, the faculty, the, uh, the staff, and uh, all of those who have contributed to the success of Dimsu. When this was conceptualized, this exactly was the dream that my father had, that from small beginnings, that 34 years later, we would have a college of excellence, we would have a university of great achievement and progress. So with that, I once again look forward to another year of achievement, progress, and glittering record of the Dimsu. Congratulations and happy birthday.